This is Bob Barker, and you're listening to Animal House Radio with Aaron and Dr. Mike. Welcome to another edition of Animal House Radio on CHHA 1610 AM. Voices of the Tennis, www.animalhouseradio.com. The show is brought to you in part by Hills Pet Nutrition, the makers of science diet and prescription pet food. Ask your local veterinarian. Call the show, 416-785-0680. Ladies and gentlemen, back from his vacation where he was in the swamps in Florida searching for alligators that could one day solve the mystery of where... Hoffa is buried. Yes, Hoffa is buried somewhere, and we're going to find him. Ladies and gentlemen, from the week of mystery, did you find Jimmy? <laughs> Dr. Mike, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Nothing much. What's up with you? How Good was, to be back. Th- how was Florida? It was cold. It, it was cold. Much warmer than here, but cold. Yeah? Yeah, mid-60s. So do you kind of regret not inviting me now? <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are going on the record right now. Janelle, she's going to be leaving us soon. She's going back to uh, her farm in Saskatchewan. Uh, but she's going to be. But we're on the record right now, Adriana, everybody here, that Mike... Dr. Mike is going to invite us in the summer up to his nice cottage for the weekend. And we're going to go jumping around. We're going to play with the kids. We're going to go in the water. Can we get a confirmation of this, that we're all invited? Absolutely. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> 100% promise. And as Richmond writes on the wall, we're going to have a really good time. Yeah, I, I saw that comment. Very, very nice. Well, we got a great show for you today. we got some really interesting news we're going to read to you in a couple of moments. Great topic for the program today. And if you want to get on the lines right now, you really should because we had an interview with Jennifer Aniston, Owen Wilson, and the director of the new film Marley and Me, as, uh, 20th Century Fox, um, David Franklin, Frankel, excuse me. And we had an interview with him, and it was amazing. This movie... I'm telling you, if you've not seen the preview for this movie, go check it out. Google it online, marleyandme.com, or just do Google Marley and Me. Uh, it's going to be great as Mike gets on his BlackBerry and, and is getting messages from his wife saying, no, they're not coming. They're not coming, Mike. No way. Aaron is not welcome up there. He's laughing because, yeah, he knows it's true. Uh, th- so this movie looks amazing, and we actually spoke with, once again, Jennifer Aniston, Owen Wilson. We're going to be playing that a little bit after the second break, along with our good friend Nicola from Toronto Animal Services. I can't pronounce the name unless I do it like that. That's great. So it's like I have a sore throat or something. <laughs> I don't know. But she's going to be from Toronto Animal Services telling us what is going on in the city. There's t- so many things we don't know about, and we're not privy to know, but we're going to find out. The city of Toronto is going to find out, and it's going to be really interesting. But now, ladies and gentlemen, Pets in the News is brought to you by Dealing with Dogs, lifestyle obedience for you and your puppy, serving Oakville, Toronto, Mississauga, and Burlington. Call 905-469-1555 or www.dealingwithdogs.com. Wow. Infotainment. Ladies and gentlemen, the news this week, a couple is fined $82,000, that's a lot of money, following animal seizures, and we're not talking about the dogs who are sick, they were fined this amount of money because they screwed up. In July, the RSPCA inspector sees more than 600 animals, including dogs, rats, guinea pigs, see I don't think that rats and guinea pigs are kind of animals, those are rodents, well not the guinea pig, but the, the rat. Anyways, 600 animals, include, including dogs, animals, cats, birds, um, from a town in, in, uh, in the United States. Now, the, the details, are, they're not throwing the details out here because it's a very hush-hush. We don't even know what the seizure was about. But all the, the information has come to light is that these two people did something that is absolutely horrible. The treatment of animals. They were absolutely brutal to these 600 animals. How do you get the law enforcement to take 600 animals away? That is the question. I I think it's unheard of. I've never heard this in Canada where they have seized 600 animals. I've heard cases where it's 5, 10, but to see 600 animals and find the individuals $82,000, I think this is a precedent. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the county which did this, they want to make a law right now to basically say, you know what? You're not allowed to own any more animals for the rest of your life. That's probably a good suggestion. But legally, they can't, as I'm taking pictures for my next Vogue shot. Thank you, Janelle. Um, now, once again, these types of things happen all the time. People treat their animals like garbage. People treat their animals horrible. And what happens is you have some good organizations like the Toronto Animal Services, the SPCA, all these organizations, and what they do is they go, they get the animals out of there, and sometimes they, they can only legally slap a tiny fine. So you can treat your animal like garbage, 
it will cost the city $80,000 to fix. And you know what? It's a $500 fine, and you legally have the right to take your animal back. So I think that this approach right here where they're saying, listen, you know what? We're going to put a new law into effect. You're legally never allowed to own an animal ever again in this county, and you owe us $82,000 to cover the cost of what we did. I think this is a step in the right direction. I do. I agree. So, uh, yeah, good for them. And you know what? For anybody out there who, who mistreats their animals, there's nothing, uh, I think there's nothing lower in, in life if, if you're going to hurt animals because you can't really hurt a defenseless creature. It's, it's just like, ugh, it's the, the, the thought of it is disgusting. Right. Anyways, but good, good for that city. Hopefully something good happens with that. Mike, you've got some very interesting news at a study that just came out from the National Geographic. Tell me about that. It's a, actually a, a study done at the University of Vienna in Austria. It's kind of neat. Uh, they found out that dogs can actually feel envy. They did a study on 43 dogs and found out that canines actually reacted to inequity. It's funny. A team took one dog, and they would watch another dog receive a reward for doing a trick. And when the dog watching performed the same trick and didn't get a reward, the dog ended up refusing to do the trick again. Really? Yeah. That explains a lot with Romeo. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. I think. Now, what's interesting about that, they did the same study on, on monkeys and chimpanzees and found that primates also do this. But one thing that they found out is that dogs are not as sensitive to inequality as the primates. In other words, um, if the dogs, uh, if one dog got a better reward than the other dog, there wouldn't be a problem. As long as they got as long something. As they got something. Exactly. So, so basically, the dogs are jealous. <laughs> exactly. Like, okay, you're going to give him a treat? You got it. He just he peed all over the rug. Why are you giving him a treat? Now, the other interesting thing is if the dogs, neither of the dogs got a reward, then they continued working more or less the same. So, really? Anyway, an interesting study, but yeah. it essentially shows us that dogs can, can feel envy. So, that was an interesting story. That doesn't make any sense at all. There you go. I don't know. I, 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 I believe dogs feel certain things. I think cats feel certain things. Um, I can see my dog being jealous when I'm... You know, when I'm at home doing something, I, the dog is jealous. If I if I give a toy and I don't pay attention, he gets mad. So maybe you have something there. I don't know. Dogs get jealous. So there you go. That's some news from Austria. I wonder what other scientific stuff they're doing in Austria. <laughs> Seriously, why spend money on a, on, a, on a study to see if dogs get jealous? I can put five dogs in a room, put a toy in one place, and the other dogs are going to get really upset with me because they didn't get one. It's like, two, it's like having kids. You give one kid something, the other one's going to be like, why didn't you give me something? It's going to act out. I wonder how much money they spent in that study. It's re- the more I think about that, the more angry I get. Why would you waste millions of dollars? Hello, Austria. We're in a recession. What are you doing spending all that money? I don't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was brought to you by our good friends at uh, dealingwithdogs.com. I, I don't know. Things will make sense to me. Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite segment, Dr. Mike's Nutritional Nuggets. Well... Uh, we talked about puppy food at one time, two or three shows ago, and I gotta tell you, I've, I've seen a lot of senior pets in the last month, and one thing that really frustrates me is it's very easy to trans, transform a dog from a puppy to an adult. They, they kinda get that, and they, they go from a puppy food to an adult food, but very few people I find switch their dogs or their cats from an adult food to a senior food. And I don't think they realize that it's just as important to do that as it is to go from a puppy to an adult food. Now, we talk about senior dogs. Typically, we talk about 8 years of age, and for cats, it's 10 years of age. But the advantage of a senior dog food over, or a senior cat food over an adult cat or dog food is that senior foods tend to have a little less protein, a higher quality protein, so it's a little easier on the kidneys. They tend to be supplemented with antioxidants, with fatty acids. They have vitamins and minerals that are sort of de- designed for senior dogs and senior cats. So I'd like to see more people who have senior dogs go to their, uh, go to pet stores and find foods that are specifically required for seniors, and they'll live a lot longer. Now, you can get that information on, on, on the uh, AFCO statement, can you? Right. Yeah, the AFCO statement should... I, nev- see, I see brands all the time saying, for adults only, for adults only, for, for dogs that are eight and a half years and, and you know, blue eyes. But uh, <laughs> is yeah. it, you know, I, I don't know. That's well, the thing. If you go look at the AFCO statement, it should say for the maintenance of adult dogs. A lot of adult dog food says for all life stages, and that's essentially puppy, adult, senior, and there's no food that really now, can... Is it government regulated that you have to have the AFCO statement on there? Yes. Is it a law? So then I got a question, because we have a listener that has emailed before. He is buying stuff from a breeder and buying it online, and there's no AFCO statement on that, but the breeder says, this is what the dogs eat because I'm a breeder, and I'm, this, is, this is what I feed my dog. Well, I would never purchase any food that didn't have an AFCO statement yeah, on it. Yeah, well, that's what I told him. 